<laughs> You're still laughing. <laughs> Slapping about. Slapping the chicken. Slapping the chicken. <laughs> is it like flogging the dolphin? Yeah, probably. It is. I'm gonna slap a chicken. Uh, I'm gonna spank the monkey, slap a chicken. Flog the dolphin. Flog the dolphin. <laughs> Why is flogging a dolphin? Like, how would you flog a dolphin? <laughs> Okay, this is sorry. Well, mechanics involved. Sorry, Ben, but Ben Hare, this is finally your donation. Ben doesn't want to be associated with this mayhem. He really doesn't. Ben Hare, you magnificent bastard! This is the McAllen number three edition. Now, you know what, you want to know what's really funny? I only know McAllen by the colors. I read a whole bunch of different reviews of this and did some research on it. This is one of their, they're doing a whole series, numbered series. Remember, we did one of them earlier. Um, but it's special releases of the McAllens. And this one is a combination between their distiller and their master perfumer. Whoa. Roja Dove. This 48.3% yeah. jumps out of the glass, man. Well, this is... Partially created with the help of their the guy in charge of the nose. Okay, and man did he nail that So is, is now he, is he named? Perfumer? Roja Dove yeah. master perfumer according you, to does them. he work at McAllen? No, the answer is no <laughs> If you're one of the 2300 people who caught this video before we realized that mistake uh, Here's what happened you caught me and Rex not listening to each other. <laughs> so Rex asked the question, does Roja uh, actually work with Mc for McAllen? And what I heard as I was looking down at my notes was, does he work with McAllen? And the answer is, yeah, he worked with McAllen to make this whiskey. And then from that point on, you saw me and Rex having two different storylines simultaneously. One, Rex freaking out about how funny it was that McAllen has a perfume guy, and me thinking he was joking about how funny it would be to have a perfume guy. So, we don't normally edit mistakes, we just sort of live with them and let it be like, hey, we're human and that's how this works because we shoot so much content and there's so minimal editing. Um, but this one was too big. <laughs> we don't want people to search this video in the future and think that Roja actually works for McAllen and then start feeding that information out there. Um, I had a whole page of notes about Roja and his whole history as a master perfumer. We just never got to because the video ran long. Still, as always, if you want to see the real content on this one or someone really dive into the whole backstory, go watch Scotch Test Dummies. We throw it to them a little bit later in this episode. Carry on. Yeah. So, do you, for you to have the job of master perfumer at Cal's like, oh, what do you do? Do you like, you know, do, you do all the whiskey and distilling it's and like, the master? I make sure things smell good. I'm the, I'm the smell guy. <laughs> to have a distillery so big, <laughs> you, you have, have a smell guy? <laughs> you have a smell guy. His <laughs> job, it's not like, hey, team, get around, how's that? Pretty good, cool. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> we got a smell guy for got, that. He's got an office, <laughs> he's got notebooks. He has a little plaque right? it's on his desk. Smell guy. That smells lovely, by the way. The, the guy does good work. Top-notch smell guy. <laughs> Top-notch smell guy. <laughs> it's funny, some distilleries, if we happen to like a, a, a whiskey, we reviewed it, they'll take an excerpt from what we say and they'll put it on the website. Mm -hmm. It'd be hilarious if McAllen... Top-notch McAllen, if McAllen, top notch smell all these, guy. All of these quotes and award-winning, you know, plaques and whatever it is, Rex the Mooch. Top-notch <laughs> top smell, top smell guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so what I think, so there is a whole nerd part to this where wow. it breaks down all the different casks that went into this whiskey. Yeah. And there's a lot of them. Uh -huh. um, the cool story part of this for our people is that uh, I read like three different reviews that said, so I was trying to search for this whiskey because I really wanted it. Yeah. And, it, and I saw it because the Scotch test dummies somehow got their hand on it yeah. before everyone else... And so all the different reviewers were like, well, I'm going to review this thing, but right now the Scotch Test Dummies is the only one who have a bottle. You so know what? You know what? go watch their review because it's awesome. Because they got in with the smell guy. <laughs> they know the smell guy. <laughs> they, yeah. They know the smell guy like that. Uh, so for the truly legitimately nerdy review, go so, we'll, in-depth review. Go we'll, watch theirs. We'll link it up here. Well, right here, the Scotch Test. The good guys. 
We hung out with him here in Austin. All right. But the nose on this is really great. Okay, so we have opted out from all of the nerd stuff. Well, I mean, the nerd stuff as far as like explaining all of the different casks that went into this whiskey, okay. you can Google that. It's fine. Okay. Now on the nose, saw this is it. You know, oh, man, this is this like this is mature sweetness. Horchata. This is horchata. Like the sweetened milk. Yeah, the cinnamon sweet milk. Horchata. There is, but there's a spice in there that's yeah. not any of those things. It's like, oh, oh, this is oh, it's it's like a neutered oak. I'm saying neutered oak. Is that a new tasting on the tasting wheel? I'm saying it's neutered not neutered oak. It's not a lively oak, it's not a spicy oak, it's not a bitter oak. But if you think of oak as being this brick of flavors, then it went and got that oh, dude, taste it. right in the middle of the oakiness. This is one of the prettier whiskeys I've ever tasted. This may be my new favorite McAllen. And that includes the McAllen M. That is so good. So it... That is significantly better than the numbered edition that we tried last time. I'm bothered that you said the perfume guy worked on this because mm -hmm. the word I desperately want to use is perfumey. It is perfumey. So perfumey. On the nose and on the taste. And it's going to be... So there's there's floral elements and, and fruity elements, but I'm getting a lot of just dense, dark floral. Does that even make sense? Mm -hmm. Like a dark, mature, not at all well, light. flowers mature. in like a Hawaiian jungle instead yeah. of like a garden house, right? A jungle flower. Yeah. And so we reviewed the four. Mm -hmm. Number four. That's the number four. Mm -hmm. Try that. Patrick Cohn gave us this one. This one Warm. is creamy. Oh, damn. They're both great. Mm -hmm. They're both great. There's more. Uh, there's more happening in this mm -hmm. number three edition. This oh. one's more spicy. Both are. Enough. This one's a little more creamy oh. and vanilla. This is this is a sit down and explore whiskey, dude. I, here's the thing. I love to crap on McAllen, and I always love to say things. You know, like Glendronic and Abelor. That's the sherry cask that McAllen likes to talk about. But these two, they could convert me to becoming a McAllen drinker. If those are the only If those are the ones that I could buy at a bar. Man, and, and, but it a, is creamy. A spicy honey. There's a cream base to it all to make sure it yeah. doesn't get too pointy in, in, in any given direction. And, and the finish just lingers. It just lingers. But not in a weird way. It just all kind of just... No, it's not like I can't get rid of it. All at once, it... It's not like one element drops off the cliff. All at once, this all just starts to fade off. Have you ever had a meal that it was so good that every bite, you just, instead of like eating real fast, you take a bite and then you just kind of sit with it and go, Oh yeah. That was, that was really good. Yeah. This uh, is one of those whiskeys. The, the restaurant doesn't exist anymore, but it was like in my early 20s. Me and my young poor friends went out to a restaurant called Bistro 88. It doesn't exist anymore. Okay. And we got the Chilean sea bass. Oh. Chilean sea bass. All right. And the waiter said, you know, how is it? I said, you shut your filthy hole. You bring that chef out right now. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, is everything okay? I was like, you son of a bitch. How dare you make me something this good? <laughs> I'll never eat again. You have ruined food. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> Get the hell out of my sight. <laughs> he, he laughed and we talked for a while. But it's, oh, it was just that exact thing. Yeah, you take one bite and instead of going like, oh, that's good, you go... Yeah. It stops you in your tracks. And, and then there's this, there's this delicate balancing act between getting maximum amount of savor, mm -hmm. but you can't let the rest sit because you can't get too cold. Right. So yeah, you, as much as you just want to really draw this out, you do need to get through it yeah. in a timely manner, relatively speaking. And then when it's phenomenal. done, you wish you could start over again. It was phenomenal. It was like a sea bass. It was like, it was like the size, bigger than my fist. It's like the size of a real man's fist. <laughs> you know what that uh, most recent experience of mine like that was Hecho Mexico. Yeah. They have this chile relleno stuffed with uh, shredded pork, but it's topped with a cream walnut cranberry sauce. A cranberry sauce? So they, no, they got some mean it's, sauce. It's a creamy and spicy, creamy walnuts. Right. It's got sh uh, shredded walnuts. Right. And then cranberries, and so you get the pepper and the shredded pork with a with a cream sauce that's right. nut and cranberry. Yeah. And every single bite, I just wanted to sit there and go, "Wow, that combination of flavors is amazing." Circle back one more time. Have I done comments? We've just been no, talking you haven't about the, no, the we've whiskey been talking is about, 
We've been talking about the whiskey for the whole video. What is wrong with us? <laughs> it's supposed to be 45 seconds on whiskey, and the other <laughs> we're just talking out of our ass. Everybody knows that. Uh, so custom barrel finishing. This is from B D U P R 13. Looking for advice. I just got a one liter barrel in for aging my own whiskey. My mm -hmm. idea is to first age some Lafroy tin. Yes, his favorite scotch. For a few weeks to season the barrel, then age some bourbon in it to, yes. get, to get a smoky or peaty flavor. Yes. Is this stupid? Has anyone tried it? Does anyone have any better ideas? No. Iron Root did this. It's called Icarus. Oh. And it's so good. Yeah. It's their corn whiskey finished in, which their bourbon, finished in a an Isla cask. We have a an Isla cask down at the distillery right now that we yeah. put MGP bourbon into. Yeah. And it's turning all peppery. Absolutely do it. Yeah. Absolutely do it. Personal barrels. I'm wondering, does that have a name? No. I'm wondering where you get small barrels to do my own blending and aging in, as well as how long you'd have to age something in to impart the barrel's flavor. Is it worth it? And by the way, I missed his name because my editing of colors of fonts. So my bad, but it's in Reddit. You can go look at Reddit. It's chicken slapper. Yeah. Um, how many, how much heat transfer do you think was in that one? <laughs> You're just flogging it. <laughs> um, oh. So here's the thing about small barrels. I would love to hear about this because in my experience, I've used about four different companies for small barrels uh, personally. And the quality varies dramatically right. on uh, like some of them. Oh, I've had friends that get a small barrel, they mm -hmm. dump a bunch of whiskey in there, and then they wait a few months, bone dry Yeah. by the time they get in there. Well, it's not the leaking that's a problem for me, because uh, that usually means they just didn't prepare the barrel correctly. Because right, you're, you're not supposed to just dump things into it. But th but some of the they're using wood that's kiln dried and not aged long enough, and it gets these piney notes added to it. Uh, so I would love to see people comment on the companies that are selling small barrels out there, who you've tried, and it and it turns out to be a quality small barrel. Because there's a lot of them, and it's really hard to know what's what and who's legit. So this, I'm, I'm, I'm deciding, this is in a really uh, special balance of big, bold uh, flavors you do not often find in whiskey. Simultaneously, this is what makes it even more special, simultaneously, once those bold flavors subside, you're left with this really intricate, subtle dance of nuance Yes, that just stays with you. And I'm getting almond. The more I go back to it, I'm getting almonds. Almond, black pepper, I get flashes of the black art. The 91 black yeah. art. Yeah! Yes. Yeah. Which is, I mean, son of a bitch. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, yeah. Phenomenal whiskey. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.